Hello and welcome to this week's episode of Chatting the Pictures. I'm Kara Finnegan and I'm a writer, teacher, and historian of photography. And I'm Michael Shaw, the publisher of Reading the Pictures. So here we are, Michael, uh, another week, another group of photos. Yeah, and uh, usually the, the August, and at least the last week of August, would be like, you know, everyone would be, would be completely oblivious to the news. So we are in uh, uncharted waters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's no Joel drums to speak of at all, are there? Um, and in keeping with our uh, funky new improved format that we unveiled last week, we're going to uh, offer three segments today, each of which takes a slightly different uh, take on a photo of the week. So why don't we start with uh, a segment that we're calling the news. And here what we're really interested in is um, thinking about the question of how do news photos tell a story? And then how do we understand the information that's in uh, a news photo? And how does uh, that visual information help us understand something about uh, a particular event in the news? So uh, our photo for uh, this segment this week is uh, here and uh, Michael will give us some caption information. The photo was taken by Ben Stansall of AFP, and the caption reads, Pope Francis waves to the faithful on his Pope mobile in Dublin on August 25th, 2018, during his visit to Ireland to attend the 2018 World Meeting of Families. And then just a little bit of backstory, especially if you're watching this years from now. Um, this, the photo relates to the news of um, the clerical abuse uh, story uh, from Pennsylvania. There's a grand jury report um, that detailed uh, 300 predator priests, more than a thousand child victims, and a systematic cover, uh, cover up. Uh, and then there's a secondary part of the story, which has to do with a power struggle inside the Vatican um, with uh, some uh, con more conservative priests that are accusing the Pope of being complicit in the story or in, complicit in the the, the abuse and in, in, in knowledge of the abuse. Yeah, yeah, the covering up, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, when we talked about uh, creating the segment, uh, the news, what we wanted to get at, I think, was this idea that um, the best news photos really condense uh, key points of uh, the longer narrative uh, about the ongoing events uh, within the frame of the photo itself. And here, uh, this photo from Ben Stansel to me really does that very well. Uh, the juxtaposition of the crowds, um, some of whom were cheering and about 5,000 of them that were protesters uh, from what I understand. Um, you've got the juxtaposition of uh, right this this event, the Pope celebrating families, and then of course you have the the protest sign in the middle of all of it that really um, uh, really puts a different uh, uh, reading, if you will, uh, on the way that we might interpret this photo. Yeah, uh, what's really interesting is that uh, the what the banner does to. Uh, a picture, an image we would have looked at completely differently. Um, uh, pope uh, Francis, the Jesuit Pope, the people's Pope, uh, someone known to be more uh, a reformer, more progressive, uh, has all of a sudden, you know, is being looked at completely differently here. Uh, and so a lot of trappings that would have been reading one way now become much more ambiguous if um, uh, if not hostile you know are people waving or are they protesting um, mm -hmm. uh, is he like a spectacle at this point uh, or are these people want like you know fan, fan pictures uh, are we it seems also that we're more aware of th the of threat and security here at least when I was studying the picture I start to look at those bike hats and uh, those are security people. You see the security guy riding on the uh, side of the Pope mobile mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, to the right there, and his head is actually obscured by the sign. It's kind of creepy. Then the guy in the back left there, um, holding on to the uh, bar. Who, you know, it's kind of got a little bit of a pallbearerish kind of vibe to me. Uh, I know that's maybe reading in a little bit, but all of a sudden this starts to feel very, um, 
very tenuous. Yeah, and you know, I think it's so interesting that you said that about the the, the trappings, right? So um, the Pope Mo Mobile both conceals and reveals. Uh, uh, in in the sense of, you know, the point is to protect him physically uh, and allow him to be viewed and visible by the people, but also at the same time to, uh, uh, you know, to make sure that uh, he's safe, right? And this goes back to Pope John Paul II and assassination attempts and whatnot. And so, um, yeah, what, what seems like, uh, oh, I'm trying to be more accessible while still being protected move, uh, which would be the standard way you would read a picture of the Pope in a big crowd like this. Really, it's almost, uh, it, it, it's turned in on itself in a way to say that, you know, he's protected, but there's also kind of a new transparency happening here. And so wow. to me, one of the things that's really interesting about the photo <laughs> is the very things, you know, especially the very things that have been hidden uh, within the Vatican and within the Vatican's, um, uh, the question of cover up is now exposed. And, but he's not entirely exposed, right? Cause he's still protected and there's still this glass between him and the people. So to me, what, um, again, what this photo does as a news photo condensing the story is that juxtaposition. And, and I like the way you talked about that, that, that sense of the security surrounding him as well. And, and the crowd is pressing in and the narrative is open and public now and getting more public. And the dirty laundry, as you pointed out, is really starting to be aired from within the Vatican itself. Yeah, um, I, 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 There's a lot happening here. Yeah, but I, I really like what you're saying and, uh, about the Pope Mobile and even just the term, which is, I don't know, I don't think that was the formal designation for this vehicle uh, early on, but it's kind of an affectionate term. It's kind of cute, like, you know, it's not the Oscar Mayer Wiener Mobile, but, you know, people have kind of, you know, adopted it. And so now with all these charges, I like that, that he's, you know, that he's exposed, there's a transparency. But even more, I have to say, you know, sort of, sort of like last week, I had that association to Trump as Nixon giving the farewell on the Air Force One. Well, this is kind of twisted. But when I first saw this picture and, the, and especially reading that very, very aggressive and, and disturbing banner, one visual association I had was um, uh, Eichmann at the Nuremberg trial. Oh, wow. Uh, <laughs> <I know. laughs> That's intense. Yeah. <laughs> It's pretty That's intense, but, you know, yeah. he's now in the bubble and, and then, you know, is he trapped in there? And, you know, they talk about the mm -hmm. president in the bubble, too, and the White House does. And so, you know, from this kind of affectionate ob uh, object and vehicle, now it's like, is that flipped? Um, so yeah yeah i think that's a really good point that's a really good point yeah and you know the that kind of broader his uh historical association i was just thinking about the one of the when i first looked at the photo i was trying to read the last word on the banner oh yeah and i can't read it you know you know biggest pedophile ring in the history of and then it's I fuzzy it's, I <laughs> and i yeah. part you know part of me was like in the history of Ever, you know, I mean, it, it again, it's that ambiguity as well. Oh, yeah, the way that you're talking about that, yeah, yeah, uh, the yeah, history of the blank, right? Could be anything, and that itself again points to the significance, too. Yeah, it is yeah. interesting if the word is man and it's ambiguous, you know, so yeah, so are these yeah. men and then they're all men, and you know, yeah. it's it pretty gendered there, yeah, exactly, exactly. So, um, yeah. so, so, uh a good news photo from Ben Stancil. Um, shall we move <laughs> on? Um, let's let's uh, move on to our next segment. And this is a segment that we're calling the look. And here we're we're really asking the question of how how are news photos making the best use of artistry and style and. And we want to look at images here that are pushing uh, the visual boundaries in, in order to illuminate certain aspects of a story or an idea. And uh, this uh, image uh, comes to us from uh, the events of the week, uh, uh, the passing of Senator John McCain. The um, photo was taken by Aaron Schaff um, for the New York Times. Uh, and uh, I've also really been enjoying her work all the way back to the campaign. Um, the caption reads, people look at the front pages of newspapers reporting the death of Senator John McCain outside the museum in Washington. And I believe what they do is they put up the day's um, uh, 
uh, front pages um, yeah. on the street. Uh, and um, yeah, but I, I was just going to say, um, it's just, you know, it's wonderful the balance here between like the media narrative and then the, the public's perception. And um, yeah, I have some other thoughts. Why don't you, what, how, how you see in this? Yeah, I mean, this photo, what Chap is doing, I think, is really is um, very creatively visualizing the decisions that editors have to make when a public figure dies. <laughs> um, uh, and, and, and she's showing us two options, uh, uh, both of them equally plausible in the context of the, the collective memory or the media narrative that's accrued over time about McCain. And uh, I like that. And I think that by itself is really interesting. But then, of course, you get the reflection. So, um, you know, the, the theme of the photo for me is, you know, let's visualize how people remember and how people remember, according to this photo, is ambivalent and complex and uh, maybe changeable. And to me, the the gesture that gets at that is the 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 figure in the middle, uh, the uh, reflected in the middle of the photo. The, the appears that the person is uh, a person of indeterminate gender uh, and race is wearing a hat and possibly glasses and has their hand up to their mouth. And to me, it's sort of like this person is going like, oh, like how how should I remember him? <laughs> uh, you know, like making a choice between maybe one or the other of these narratives. Uh, at least the ones that Schaff has captured in the frame. And so uh, it's both kind of, hey, here's how editors look, but it's also like, so what am I supposed to do? Like, what do I think about this guy, John McCain? Uh, and I, I really like that. I really like that a lot. I think it's a really smart photo. Yeah, but what I, I think that's really interesting. I didn't think I didn't think about that. Uh, when I th think about artistic photographs, and as I've said a lot, they, the news photographs are getting more and more artistic every day. I think that success is determined by the ratio of the uh, 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 power of the, the the artistry, how much it how much it's doing with it for your eye, versus how much content you know you're getting, and how much the artistry is informing the content as opposed to overwhelming it. And this is a to me is an amazing example of something that's got, you know, that's visual, you know, for what, as far as I can see, but then there's tons of meaning or narrative there. There's these two views of McCain. Yes, they're both like facets of McCain, but at the same time, when you just look at those images of them, of him, you get sort of like the uh, public McCain and the private McCain and the, and you get, and that McCain on the right looking down like that, it's sort of a little bit like the guy who's made a lot of mistakes and he's been very, was very impulsive and he, and he was, uh, variable in his beliefs. And, you know, the guy like sort of like with the hair shirt. And then it also picks up this uh, messaging that you're getting from Trump and the far right where Trump, uh, where uh, McCain was sort of a loser and we don't like guys that get captured. And so that's all like picking up like a magnet, like picking up all of that kind of narrative that's in play. So if that guy, the um, citizen is unsure how to read that, it's because of how much is getting pumped at, at him between these different visions of the man. That's really interesting. You know, I hadn't thought about that, but as you, as you were talking, I also thought about the, the difference between the photos, the McCain on the left and the McCain on the right is also about um, kind of the wounded McCain too. So the, the image on the right shows the damage to McCain's face that um, my understanding is was, was caused at least in part by his time as a POW. And I remember as, as you were talking, I was remembering during the presidential campaign in 2008, uh, talking with my students about, about some stories that McCain really preferred to be photographed on one side or the other because he didn't want um, you know, that that side of his face often always represented. And so and he's had multiple um, bouts of skin cancer. Also. Right. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And so the photo on the left is sort of the the McCain face, literally, that he wanted to to put forward. Ah. So that's really that's really interesting, too, because that's helping me see some of the, just the physicality oh, of right. the choices yeah, that these editors profile. made as well. Yeah. yeah. So that's pretty interesting, too. 
Yeah. Um, there's also something, I don't know, you know, I don't know what time of day this photo was taken, but there's also a kind of sunset feeling about it, or, you yeah. know, that kind of the, the magic hours, the filmmakers call her that waning yeah. daylight, which again yeah. creates yeah. the shadow, which is effective photographically, but also sort of gives you the sense of, you know, the lion has passed on, et cetera, and the sunset of his life. And yeah. so there's a number of ways you could, um, you know, just sort of, I think even just play with the, uh, the look of this photo in terms of light, which is And not only that, but is it is it a sunset on McCain's version of America and McCain's optimistic view of the country? And so, you know, it does ke it does kind of echo out that way also. You know, it's kind of another phrase that came to me was and as a kind of a double play on the language was, you know, I was thinking about Reagan and Reagan's optimism and this term mourning in America. Uh, and, yeah. Yeah. And you get this darkness that is that and the doom and gloom that's coming from the far right and, 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 and Trump. And so, you know, how much is, is the photograph um, channeling that as well? Yeah. Yeah. So um, a really great example of the look uh, in terms of uh, what our interest is in this segment is really thinking about how a photograph uh can visually push the boundaries in creative ways to embody ideas. Uh, let's move on to our last segment, um, which we call the pick. Um, and what we're getting at here is the sense of thinking about what makes a photo a good editorial choice uh, when we know that photo editors uh, have lots and lots of, of, of very good options in front of them. Why do they make the choices they make or why might we read into the choices they make? Um, and then what photos are ones that tend to get public traction and, and why might that be the case? So um, the first of the, the pick that we're gonna talk about uh, is this photo. Do you wanna just take a quick look at the second one too and then come back? Sure. Yeah, yeah, why don't we do that? So, so this is a, the first photo, this is a Doug Mills New York Times photo. Uh, second photo, same, um, uh, same presser, you might say, uh, and this is uh, Mandel uh, and gone from AFP. So here we are. Yeah. Do you want the, to start here? Sure. Um, the first photo uh, was taken by Doug Mills, and uh, I don't think I even have to read the caption. Um, it was uh, taken... Um, during a uh, live uh, pool uh, event in the Oval Office where the president was talking to um, or trying to talk to the president of Mexico on the phone about his new NAFTA deal um, uh, or old NAFTA deal or no NAFTA deal. Um, but uh, the telecommunications didn't exactly go very well. Uh, so I think Trump and you could see that Trump was, if you watch the video, was very upset that they couldn't get Nieto on the phone right away. And then the fact that he was uh, still kind of ticked off about that when the call concluded. Uh, and then what happened was, because he's got the press corps in front of him, he got peppered with questions about John McCain and what happened early in the week when they had the flag at half mast for half a day. And then they, you know, and then they raised them up and brought them back down again. And so, a lot of people have been talking about how Trump um, had a big challenge this week to kind of give McCain his due and just lay low, which is impossible for him because he has to be the center. And so here he is refusing to answer the questions about McCain after the car went awry or the technology did. Um, so, um, uh, yeah, I mean, you were saying that there's always two, three, sometimes five choices when there's a, a major event and you get the very talented White House um, uh, uh, photo pool or, uh, you know, it, 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 they're, you know, capturing all these images. So it really is fascinating what pick, what picture people go with and, and what the different inflections are. Uh, I know this segment's starting to turn into like uh, editor's delight because we heard <laughs> the number of them this week. Oh, this is amazing. You're doing that. So yeah, anyway, yeah. I'll, I'll throw yeah, it back so, to you and then kind of jump back in again. There's there's very interesting contrast between the two. 
Yeah. And so I think part of the reason why we ended up, I'll just click back and forth a moment. Um, part of the reason why we ended up thinking about these photos was because this was an event for which we had a number of images. Um, and we noticed that newspapers around the country, um, uh, the Times and then others, were doing, were choosing different images and, and highlighting different things. And that, that itself is, is of note. And then I also would note that uh, some newspapers ran this Doug Mills image in color. I think the Times, my memory is the Times ran it in black and white, which is. I'm not um, actually sorry to jump in there. Yeah, uh, do we as not far know as that? I understand because the New York Times does have a um, distribution service now. I'm not sure okay. the Times even ran this picture, but Mills did run it uh, a tighter version of it. Okay, that might be what I saw on Instagram. That was black and white. Yeah, so maybe he, if he's out there, he can clarify that for us. Um, yeah, so you know this image. I mean. Mills is amazing. And just the way he's covered Trump, <laughs> just, I just, I'm just constantly just blown away by the perceptiveness and the way that he reads Trump's body language. Or Doug Mill um, groupies. Yeah, you know, admittedly, Trump's body language is not subtle, but I think Mills does a very subtle job of depicting um, kind of Trump in physical space, if you will. Um, you know, to me, if, you know, if we think about these two images in contrast, to me, uh, you know, the, this image is really designed, I think, to um, get us to think about this, you know, moment. I mean, this moment was designed to be, uh, you know, a photo op in the really truest sense of I'm going to bring them all in here. And they're going to see yeah. me talk to the president of Mexico and we're going to get a deal done. And they're going to see me do a deal in real time. And that is not exactly what happened. Didn't go Trump's way. So you have I think this is a photo that really depicts the sense of things are not going Trump's way, but it does it in a way that I think really hits at the stage nature of things, right? He's got like the one sad piece of paper in front of him. Um, you get the sense of, you know, kind of the trap, the visual trappings of the photo op behind him. And then you have the body language playing out too. The contrast with, for me, the contrast with Ngan's photo is first buffoonery that Trump just looks like a buffoon. He looks, I think, differently pissed off, you might say, than he does here. Um, but also the angle, I don't know, if, Michael, if you notice the angle at which these two photos are, are shot, to me, gives a different feel. And I can't exactly explain uh, what that is. I mean, is, is Mills looking down on Trump, encouraging us, the viewer, to look down on Trump? Or is, is he trying to show us something else? Yeah, um, I I think that the I, I didn't notice at first. I really had to study the two uh, a little bit more, but I I didn't really realize how much the framing impacted the 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 meaning here. Uh, it less looking down than what I thought was the um, the width of the photo relative to the size of the desk. And what's where I think that you see some of Mills's um, brilliance is how, at least in this version, the version that he had on Instagram was cropped. So you, so it, so Trump was larger and you didn't see the edges of the desk. But in this shot, it really feels like because the, um, the desk is wider or, or the, the frame is wider than the desk and Trump is further away. It makes him seem not just smaller, but like the job, the job is actually like Beyond him, you know, I, I, I'm watching, looking at those cables from the from the telephones. So that I think is really interesting. And Engon's uh, picture, which is more like kind of classic Trump, it's sort of like Trump. Is, everything's Trump. Trump is everything. He's the you know, it's all about him. And so Engon accentuates that. And then of course, you know, the tighter arms. It feels like he's ready to blow. You know, we're, whereas yeah. back to Mills's shot, you know, you also get this sense of him, um, you know, just like minimized. And then also and then you also get more of a sense of that barren desk that he's got like nothing to do or he's just following the script on the piece of paper. But I, I think a lot of it comes into just like how much more you see beyond just the piece of furniture. Yeah. 
That's really, you know, I like that because I had not thought about it in terms of the relative way that they're taking up physical space. But yeah, I think in the, in the Mills version here, you really, uh, the, Trump is in a very, you know, fancy leathery executive chair, right? A kind of apprentice style executive chair. Uh, but he is not really taking up all the space. You know, he's not taking up all the executive space you would expect, whereas here he's kind of overfilling it. Uh, and you get that desk level perspective in it. Yeah. And then he, I noticed too the flags, right? So here the flags, he's kind of being hemmed in, but in a way that he would probably want, right? Because you want those flags there. Uh, he wants to be associated in that way. Where here, uh, again, it's, as you pointed out, that the the desk uh, is taking up all the space and um, you don't get that sense, uh, quite the same sense of the presidential majesty, um, uh, you know, that you're, uh, I think, supposed to get when you're, uh, you know, invested in this kind of presidential photo op. Um, yeah. But it really does, it gives you this real, this, these two images, I think, uh, really do give you a sense of, okay, if you're the photo editor, what would you do, right? And to me, they're equally good photos, but they're different. And so you would need to have, you know, ha think about how they're different and why, and, and, you know, why you really would have to think about why would I be choosing this one over this one? Well, I, and I think that there's a lot of psychology in this, and that's where, like, my, me, the psychologist, kind of, you know, really perks up also because in uh, the mill shot you get trump more and these are facets i guess of trump's you know neurosis but you know you see him as much more defeated uh his arms aren't so tight but he's more like kind of pulled in he, and he's really more angry at the phone and you almost get this sense of like this that anger turned inward you know like he seems more almost maybe mad at himself uh and but uh, on the Ingen shot, you really get more of the, you know, Trump, the explosive Trump. Here you get that pure peak. And you see he's really steamed. And now he's giving it to, you know, he's really mad at the media. Mm -hmm. and he's really mad at us. And that's, this is, this is, you know, Trump in fine form. So I, I think you do get the kind of these different, you know, uh, versions, you know, they're almost maybe, maybe flip sides of the coin even of how his psychology works, you know, kind of inward aggression and then outward aggression. Yeah. And I had just a, one kind of last quick point, because I know we need to wrap up, but I, I hadn't thought about this until you just did that juxtaposition, that this is a, there's a little bit of an analogy of which McCain, you know, we're getting two different Trumps yeah. in these two photos uh, with regard to the last photo as well. Um, so, so the news, the look, the pick. Yep, <laughs> we're rolling. <laughs> <laughs> there we are. Um, we will be back next week with more of all the things. Do you want to tell people where to find us? Yeah, you can find us on Instagram at Reading the Pictures. You can follow, find us on Twitter where we are just like copiously involved at Reading the Picks. Uh, and on our website, uh, which we haven't been feeding that much these days, but you can sign up for our newsletter and. We will stay in touch with you. So uh, I'm sure holiday notwithstanding, there's going to be plenty more next week. And we look forward to seeing you then. Yeah, one suspects the photographers will still be uh, photographing and busy on Labor Day. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, everyone. We'll see you soon. Take care.